this is the 2019 Ford Expedition Limited Max. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, guys in, in a Ride. ride. Say, if you want to keep up to date on new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know all the latest vehicle technologies, and you love cool collector cars, take a second to hit that subscribe button below and ring that bell notification so you never miss a video. So what do you say, Nathan? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. Today, we are with our friends at Chuck's Faith Ford in beautiful New Ulm, Minnesota. Boy, I tell you what, the seats in here are really comfortable. I I, I like all the rows, I'm, and it's well, you'll, this will come up, but I think this third row is the most spacious third row I've ever sat in. So, yep, knee room, leg room, just. Well, I know I general. tried it out earlier, so I like that power recline because most yes. third rows. That's the first time I've seen a reclining third row. I like the steering wheel. Plenty of plenty of headroom, even with this added panoramic sunroof, because that always adds a little bit to the depth of your roof. So you know, riding here in town, I, I it's it's nice and quiet. We'll see. I, I do hear a little tire noise. Yeah, from the rear. Yeah, it's not from the front. The front seat's very well dapped, but but I'm picking up a little bit from the rear. But I think you kind of get that in all of these. I think about it. It's a big cargo box on wheels, so you're going to get yeah. some little bit of sound just echoing because even with all the um, uh, sound insulation dampening. and sand, sound dampening, you're still going to get some, but it, it's not, I mean, we're conversational right now. It's easy conversation. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you'll sit in the back uh, when I drive. Yes. Uh, so we can talk and just see kind of how loud you have to talk in order to be heard back and forth. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, I am actually going to pull over here and let Rob drive. You're going to hop in the back. I am going to. I think third I'm row? Gonna, I'm going to go the third row. All right. Um, and see what that, you know, if, if I can hear any more of that sound that I'm hearing. Oh, sure. Or, or not. So hang on a minute. This is that, that, uh, uh, here we go. The rotary dial. I'm not used to that. I like the steering wheel. Nice big steering wheel opening at the bottom. Nicely padded. You've got your, your th thumb points here. Um, we'll take a look at the acceleration and the braking, but the, the, so far the, the, uh, handling and the steering you know, the in town has just been phenomenal. And, and uh, I'm sitting in the third row back here. Way, I, I'm, way back I'm gonna there. wait till we're out on the road here, but I'm gonna tell you what, I do not hear the same sound I heard Okay. in the front. It's interesting. Well, that was either you or me then. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got lots of room back here. Well, you were saying that earlier. So, I mean, you've got lots, I mean, I mean would you think that would be comfortable for a long ride? I think so. I really? think I don't think three adults, but I think two adults. Okay. Okay. Would be for, they're not as padded as the other seats. Right. Right. But they are by far the most comfortable third row seats I've ever sat in. Okay, because you're you're back of the axle back there. So yeah. how does how does it ride? I mean, we really hadn't hit any big bumps, but it, I mean, does it feel bouncy or no? No. Okay. Nope. Feels nice. Uh, initial driving impression, wow. <laughs> it's, you know, I feel like I'm in an F-150 by looking at the dashboard layout in the center console, but then I look back here and I've got, you know, four or five other people and or cargo and animals or moving or you name it. And uh, you wouldn't think that you're driving a vehicle that big from the no, driver's from seat. there, yeah. Yeah. And you're right, the seats are very nice. I... Yes. <laughs> Minimal adjustment to get it to where I wanted it, but then I, it's just, it's comfortable. And I like the materials inside. I like the overall aesthetics, uh, the combination of colors. It works. Um, yeah, I like it. This does have side curtain airbags. 
okay. all the way. We'll shoot out along all three sets of windows here on the sides okay. and come between the passenger and uh, the window. Uh -huh. And they are extended deployed, so they'll stay blown up a little bit longer oh. than, say, your uh, airbags up front. Okay. And we're just going to go straight, and if we hit the woods, the brakes failed. So, all right. <laughs> three, hey. two, one. Whoa. Instant. That stopped it right away. Wow. That's nice. That's secure because the other thing is about in a big SUV, you're wondering if you're carrying all this weight, if you're going to be able to stop quickly if you need to. I don't think you have any problem there. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. Next up, we've got uh, my outside review. And then after that, we will have Nathan's inside review to take you through all the technology of this vehicle. Enjoy. There are six trim levels for this vehicle, starting with the XLT, and that starts at 52,130. The XLT Max, 54,815. The Limited, 63,015. The Limited Max, 65,705. The Platinum, 73,363. And the Platinum Max, starting at 76,060. This vehicle is the uh, Expedition Max Limited, and it's powered by a 3.5 Echo Boost engine producing 400 horsepower and 480 pound-foot of torque. It does have auto start-stop technology. It's driven with a 10-speed select shift automatic transmission, and there is a 2-speed automatic four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive only, of course, with neutral towing capability. On the front end, you have halogen projector beam headlights, daytime running lights that are configurable, fog lights that are halogen, and the fascia is painted body color. You have intermittent front and rear wipers, windshield wiper de-icer, door handles are body colored with chrome inserts, and the roof rack uh, side rails are bright stainless. Running boards are power deployable, magnetic painted with stainless polish accent body colored lower body side cladding and wheel lip moldings and then bright chrome grill with silver lining painted accents uh, it's a magnetic grill so i guess that magnetic is the color i don't think anything actually sticks to it <laughs> optional on this vehicle you can get rain sensing front wipers of course the license plate bracket and states that require it uh, LED fog lights and LED headlights. You have a number of different types of wheels available, wheel packages, uh, 20 inch and up uh, to 22, uh, covered with piece 275 55R 20 all season tires. You can optionally get 22 inch polished aluminum with P285 45R 22 all season or P275 55R20 off-season black sidewall tires with an 18-inch spare. And then, of course, premium 22-inch black painted wheels. This vehicle has a fully boxed frame. Front suspension is independent short and long arm coilover shocks with stabilizer bar. Rear suspension is multi-link independent rear. Does have electronic power assist and racket pinion steering front and rear stabilizer bars, advanced track with roll stability control, electronic stability control, trailer sway control, terrain management system, four wheel drive only, and you have selectable drive modes, traction control, hill start ascent and hill descent control included on four wheel drive models only. Optional, of course, is the control track four-wheel drive system, electronic limited slip differential that's a 3.73 rear axle, and integrated brake controller included with heavy-duty trailer tow package. Out back, you do have rear window defroster and washer, lift gate with manual lift glass separately from the gate. So you do the have the hands-free foot-activated uh, lift gate, body color bumpers, single exhaust, LED tail lights, and class four trailer hitch receiver under the cover there. Now the economy on this vehicle is 17 city 23 highway. It does, does ride on a wheelbase of 131.6 inches. The overall length is 221.9 inches. It's overall height, 76.4 inches. The width, including mirrors, 93.4 inches. Now the front overhang is 38.2 inches, 
The rear overhang is 52 inches. Approach angle, 23.7 degrees, and departure angle is 21.3 degrees, with the ramp breakover angle being 20.1 degrees. Minimum running ground clearance is 9.8 inches. Take you around back again and show you that cargo area. And I've got the seats up, so let's put those down. And we could also put down the second row as well for back here. Power second row, really cool. Now, the cargo volume in this vehicle, as you see it right now, is 121.5 cubic feet. Well, the second row up, you've got the third row down, so you've got 73.3 cubic feet. And then cargo volume behind the third row only. I can put those back up. Those do come back up via power. The second row, you have to actually manually put those back up. But anyway, as you see it here, the cargo volume behind the third row gives you 34.4 cubic feet. So a nice amount of space in there. Fuel capacity on this vehicle is 30 gallons. Maximum towing capacity is 6,600, or if you opt for the optional heavy duty trailer towing package, you can tow up to 9,000 pounds. As far as overall styling goes on this vehicle, uh, it's pretty slab sided, but it is a big giant cargo box on wheels. That being said, I do like the uh, enhanced wheel arches that you see here. And I do like that line coming off that reflector on the side that goes all the way to the back. I really do like the grill. I think that's a good styling feature. And then of course the hood kind of carries over the theme of the Ford truck, uh, pickup trucks with the indented uh, power dome instead of a raised line in the center there. Uh, the front grill area uh, below the bumper, or at the bumper below, is a little busy for me, but it's overall nicely done. The clean lines, it's not too cluttered, it's not too exaggerated, and of course you need those openings for cooling. Well, I like the uh, overhang there of the rear window spoiler and the integrated high mount third brake light and I like the black sail panels here coming around the edge that kind of cuts that off nicely uh, for aerodynamics and the back end is nice and clean with the um, you know, the silver down below and then the chrome band running with the width on the tail lights uh, showing that it is an expedition. So on our safety, price, appearance, dependability, and economy scale that we've introduced, we're going to talk about safety. Well, check the IIHS website, and this vehicle has not yet been rated by IIHS. So you may want to check with Ford, and you may want to check back to that website periodically to see what the crash ratings are on it. We're, we're fighting a train whistle here. So I got to imagine with a fully boxed frame, you're going to have pretty good crash worthiness, both front impact, offset, and side and rear. Price ranges from $52,130 to $76,060, so, you know, if you're in the market for a large SUV that's competitive with the other manufacturers from Nissan, Toyota, Chevrolet, uh, Chrysler, you name it. Appearance versus the old version that was around far too long. You've got nice, new, clean, modern lines. And dependability. Ford engines have always proven themselves to be tough, and uh, typically Ford vehicles have a very high dependability rating, and you can check Consumer Reports for that information. Economy, well, it's an extended large size SUV, 17 city, 23 highway is very good for what you get. It is a large vehicle, but they've really done a good job with that 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6. A lot of pep in it, and it does give you the towing capacity that you need. So we're gonna hand it off to Nathan and let him take it over. Starting on the driver's door of the 2019 Ford Expedition, you've got nice soft touch materials up here on the top. You've got a window vent and you've got the pass-through handle, which, you know, I like that. Uh, and then, of course, your door opening, which is similar to the pickups. 
And um, I like this little cutout here, just design-wise. Kind of step back and you kind of get a look at it. It's a nice added feature. Um, you have a deep storage and lots of storage down in here. This does come with a 12-speaker Bing & Olufsen sound system. Um, up here, you do have auto up and down on all four windows. You do have your power folding mirror button right here, uh, which will work when the vehicle's running, which it isn't right now. Window lockout, and then your left mirror and right mirror and cursor controls. You do have a three-person uh, memory setting on the driver's seat, as well as your lock and unlock buttons. On the seats themselves, they are, I, I really like this particular color with the red. It's kind of a, a tan, a beige tan. Um, a cream color maybe um, but they're, they're they look really nice with this particular color and they are leather they are perforated these are heated and, and uh, cooled seats and uh, boy the cool seats really really work, work well um, down here you have a 10-way power on both sides uh, so that is you know front back then you can lift then you can lift the front seat cushion or lower it and then you have uh, the up, down for the whole seat, tilt, and then um, lumbar support. Over here, you've got your um, hood release right here. And coming up here, you've got your emergency brake, which is a pull on. You do have adjustable foot pedals down here, so you can adjust those back and forth. Up here, you have control the standard lighting controls for Fords. So this does have auto lights. Your fog lamps are here, and of course your dashboard lights control, uh, controls from here. Now moving up here, we have a power folding headrest for the third row. So if I show you the third row here, hit the button, they both go down. Over here, you have your um, trunk release in the back. Moving up to the steering wheel here, this is power uh, tilt and telescope right here. And then we'll hop in and uh, take a look at it from the inside. All right, this is a push start here. So we just put a foot in the brake, hit the button. See what it looks like when it starts up. All right, um, I, I really like this dashboard that Ford has, has designed and, and that's what it looks like. Coming back here, you've got cursor controls here to control uh, all the information on your driver's information system. Down here is your cruise control. This does have adaptive and it's all right. This is a push start here. So we just put a foot in the brake, hit the button. See what it looks like when it starts up. All right, um, I, I really like this dashboard that Ford has, has designed and, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a little bit. That's what it looks like. Coming back here, you've got cursor controls here to control uh, all the information on your driver's information system. Down here is your cruise control. This does have adaptive, and it's what I call fully adaptive, so it comes to a complete stop. But basically, you have your on-off, your cancel. You, have, uh, you can uh, decrease the gap in your uh, adaptive cruise control or increase it. And of course, set it, resume, and then increase or decrease your miles per hour when the cruise control is set. Moving over to the right side, these buttons here all have to do with your media. Okay, volume up, volume down, uh, scroll left or select a different station to the left, go to the right. Okay, memory button right here for stations you have programmed. Down here, you have a couple different buttons. You've got a mute button for the volume. And then you have a phone on, a phone off, and then voice command right here. This does come with voice command um, navigation. Now, you can do more things than just that. If, if, for instance, uh, with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you can control some of your apps. So, uh, moving over here, um, first of all, on the top, you're just getting a nice look out of the dashboard. Uh, this is familiar looking. This is kind of the same look we saw in the Raptor and uh, you kind of see in the, the pickups. But it's all soft touch materials right here. The only hard plastics are kind of right on the edge, okay? Uh, this is a nice deep storage tray. That's part of the Bang & Olufsen's uh, sound system, okay? And then more soft touch. Uh, I like the, 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 the stitching look there, okay? And then if you come back here, we have got Starting at the top of the infotainment screen, you've got hill descent control. 
You've got traction control on or off. You've got your hazards. You've got your lane keeping assist on or off. And then your auto start stop on or off. Okay. Down here, you've got your infotainment screen, which this does come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, as well as navigation. And then all of your basic controls are sitting down here. You can click on them and go to any screen. Down here, you have some physical controls for your media. You've got volume, you've got power, you've got your memory settings. And then down here, you've got mute, you've got the graphic equalizer, you've got rewind or basically go back a station, uh, play pause, go forward a station. And then over here is the most interesting button to me because it's a little unusual. But if you press this, the screen disappears. So for some reason, you don't want the screen on. It's still functioning, but it's just not on. You can actually turn the whole entire screen off. And if you push it again, it comes right back on. I, I like that. That has a unique feature. And then, of course, you have a physical tuning button right here. Now, you would connect your phone to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto down in here. So if I push this back, you're going to notice that three really neat features. Okay, first of all, you have your two USB ports. So that's features one and two. And that's where you connect to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. In fact, that's only one spot. You, there, that's one of two spots you can connect. That's the first one. But it has a wireless charger right here for your phone. I love that feature. And it's a simple push, and it closes. Down here, you have the physical controls for the climate control. Let's say that your passenger decides to change their temperature. You notice the dual light lights up right here. And if you push it again, it goes back to being synced, which, which is nice that you don't have to go into the infotainment screen for that feature. Okay, uh, moving further on down here, this is a rotary dial um, gear selector. And um, I'm not particularly a fan of it, although um, I like that better than, say, a push button one. So if I just rotate this dial, I can go to reverse, neutral, drive. And if I want to go to manual, I can click that button. And then up in my dashboard, I do get the gear selector showing up right over here. The interesting thing is there's no shift paddles on here. And the way you shift is right here. Now, this has the same feature that the Explorer had on it. Uh, that we took out the 2020 Explorer and that is if you're sitting in drive um, or neutral or reverse um, and your seatbelt is off even if the car is running if I open my door it goes to park automatically moving on down here you have got a two-wheel drive and, and four uh, four-wheel drive automatic uh, and then you have uh, a drive mode buttons so I'm gonna be just rotating this, okay? It's not a push button. If you look on my dashboard here, we'll zoom in just a little bit. And here are the different drive modes. You have got sand, grass, gravel, and snow, normal, eco, sport, tow haul, mud ruts, sand, and then back to grass, gravel, and snow. And we'll leave it on normal here. All right. This particular vehicle does come with park assist. And this will help you to parallel park, do a right angle backup, or what's called a perpendicular park. It'll also have a park assist to get you out of a parking spot. Okay. This is your rear parking sensors that can be turned off or on. Now, nothing's going to show up on your dashboard. It's just this little light that comes on. If you do press the park assist and you watch your infotainment screen, okay, you can select uh, to parallel park, you can select the perpendicular park, and then you can select the button to exit parallel park out. Okay? Or you can turn the system off. And whether you see the little arrows on the right or left so wherever you're parking you just turn that air, that turn signal on and it seeks on that side of the car so you can do this on the left or the right we're going to take a look at this gigantic arm console here i love this you just a little push button right here you lift it up and you have a mammoth size storage area you got a sliding tray here and then inside you do have a 12 volt outlet and then over here you have two glove compartments the first one you can access by pushing this silver button right here. 
when that climbs up there and you've got some nice storage okay and then the bottom one of course is another big storage and yet Ford is still giving you another storage area for your uh, owner's manuals up in that little shelf so this particular vehicle comes with a panoramic sunroof okay and so appropriately so we'll take a look at the controls up here this is your uh window shade i believe that one yep close this one is open uh and then this one of course will slide your sunroof back and this one will just vent it so it'll just it'll just pop it up a little bit over here you have your led uh reading lamps and then this one turns on all the interior lamps in the vehicle and then this one sets whether the lights come on if the doors open or not moving just a little bit back here you have your sunglasses holder right here and then this is part part of ford security system here these little sensors they'll sense if if something is moving in the car um so if someone was left in the car it would it would pick up on those sensors uh, or if a window gets broken and something flies by it. Now, the other part of that system that comes um, with this particular security system, um, and it's standard on the Limited, is an incl inclination sensor. So if someone tries to lift your front tires up or your rear tires up and pull your car away, it'll sense that the vehicle's been lifted past so many degrees, and I'm not sure what the exact degree is, but it's fairly sensitive, and uh, the alarm will go off. And then down here, you have a um, automatic dimming rear view mirror. All right, so let's take a look at the second row. In the second row uh, door here, you've got the, nice, the same nice soft touch materials. You do have one of the Bang & Olsen speakers in the door. You've got some storage right here. This would make a good bottle holder right here. And then of course, the same sort of a pass through and grab handle for opening, as well as your uh, auto up and down window. And then the same just massive storage down here. There is also, um, in addition to this, the second speaker in the door, there's also some storage down here. A little, a little hard to get at, but what might be nice for certain things, okay? I really like this. I've seen this uh, more and more on Ford trucks, but this plastic plating, so that when people step into the third row, they're not stepping on some awkward you know, thin strip trying to get in where the carpet dips down. It's just a nice solid plastic piece. This particular vehicle has a um, dual seat back, dual seat back pockets. In addition to the tri-zone temperature control right back here, this does come with heated seats in the rear. Now, up here, you've got a volume control. You've got your uh, media source. You've got the clock, and then you've got a seat button for the radio. Open this up, I've got dual USB ports. Now I said there are two places you can connect to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and this is the second spot. Over here you've got a 110 volt, 150 watt household outlet. In addition to that, you've got a 12 volt outlet right down here. So they've really packed it full of plugins down here. And then in addition, you've got a little uh, shallow tray here. It's about, uh, it's about that deep, where my finger is. Hey, okay, and then you've got some cup holders for the uh, second row passengers. Now, this particular vehicle does have the optional captain's chairs in it, which is are my favorite. Right. Let's go ahead and, and uh, figure out how to uh, fold these seats flat or get into the third row. So, first of all, how do you fold them flat? Well, Ford's made it really easy. You simply take this and pull it, and the seat folds flat on its own. It's a very simple, quick, easy pull. And then, of course, you would just push it, back up to get it now if you're going to get into the third row you could crawl through the center which is what i would do but otherwise you can push this button here the seat goes up like this then you just simply take your hand and push it forward for a nice easy access into the third row now the other thing that i really like about ford's captain's chairs i've seen this in the explorers the same thing look how thick these are this is close to two and a half three inches thick which is way thicker uh, than I've seen in most captain's chairs in the rear. All right, so here I am sitting in the second row of the Expedition. And, you know, this has got that panoramic sunroof, so there's some, some extra roof there. But I still have, I'm five foot eleven and a half, and I still have at least an inch to the roof. Um, I have got so much leg room 
It's ridiculous. It's huge. Now, um, if I use that same button I used to fold the seats, I can also recline. Okay. Um, the uh, this also does pull forward, so you got that little lever down here. So if I pull that forward, I can I can slide or slide forward or go backwards. So I really like that it's adjustable. Now the other thing that I really like about this is if you take a look at the passageway between the passenger, the two passenger seats in the second row, notice that there's nothing in the floor. Okay, uh, we've seen some other vehicles that have got uh, like trays in the back here with cup holders. I really like how the Expedition has left this just empty. Okay, it makes it so easy to walk in and out of that third row. So now let's take a step into the third row and see what's there. All right, I've got to honestly say, I think this is probably the most comfortable third row seat that I've ever sat in. Not only is the seat itself comfortable, okay, but if you take a look over here, you have power reclining seats. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can get a shot of this. Oh, that's nice. And then I can power it forward if I want. Let's put it back where it's comfortable. There we go. A USB port for the third row, which I think is awesome. It's not a 12 volt outlet, it's actually a USB. You have a cup holder, you've got plenty of storage back here. That storage does continue further back. And there is, as you can see, a 12 volt outlet back there. But I love the fact that they put USB here. And then, of course, it is exactly the same on the other side. And that has also power reclining. You're going to see above me that we have this air vent right here, of course, that you can, you know, twist and manipulate. You do have your rear reading lamp, which is also LED. You have a sensor up here, part of the security system. Okay. So let's show you uh, how you can get out of here. Okay, so if I take this and I lift it up, okay, I can then just push the seat forward and I've got lots of room if I wanna get out of that way. I don't think I'd ever use it. I think I'd go through the center, but you can push it far enough forward that you can get at that grab handle right here and then open the door. Okay, so I wanted to show you my favorite thing, and uh, it is this lift gate glass out back. That... All right, so my favorite part of the Ford Expedition here is the rear bench seat in the back.